Today, this presentation is about how to carry out closed-loop testing of IEDs using high-person real-time simulators. We will follow the model-based design and testing methodology and explain step-by-step step how we could build a power system model in high-person and then how we carry out a manual test, followed by how we could implement batch testing with test view. In the end, we will also show two demos on distance relay tap testing and PMU compliance testing. If we follow the model-based design and testing methodology, the first step will be collecting the system parameters and then building a power system model in the simulation environment. Then, based on the application and the device under test, we will need to configure the IED. For example, if it is a protective relay, then we will need to define a protection scheme to be tested. And if it is IEC 6150 compatible, then uh, we will also need to carry out some engineering work to, uh, to do the IEC 6150 configuration. The next step will be uh, determining the interface between the simulator and the device under test. We could use either analog or digital signals, or we could also use IEC 6150 sample values and goose messaging. After configuring the IOs, we could start the real-time simulation. Hypersim comes with two very powerful tools, which are scope view and test view. During the real-time simulation, we can use scope view to monitor uh, the real-time simulation data, and it could also help us to do some data processing. Uh, usually when you are testing a protective relay, you will need to generate a great number of different testing scenarios. And in this case, test view can help you to automate the test sequence and generate a test report automatically. For example, if we are considering a double inset 500 kilovolt transmission line, which is uh, 300 kilometers, and then we are simulating a virtual merging unit in the model to send out the voltage and the current measurements from, um, from this bus to a distance relay. These measurements are sent out uh, in the format of sample values and the distance relay is configured to protect the first 80% of the line. In case of detecting a fault in the zone, it will uh, send out a goose message as a trip signal to operate the circuit breaker bottled uh, in the system. So here it is the interface of HyperSim 6. Uh, you will find it very familiar if you have ever used EMTPRV because they're using the same graphical engine. And now we're also working on to uh, directly import EMTP, uh, EMTP RV model to Hypersim to carry out real-time simulation. So as you can see on the red panel, there are different libraries for uh, either control blocks or for power system components. So we could drag and drop these blocks to build up a power system model. And we have a voltage source, transformer, tr transmission lines, load, and uh, circuit breakers. And this block here, it is a point on wave block. It can be used to synchronize the data acquisition uh, based on the zero crossing of an analog signal or uh, with a rising edge of a digital signal. And then the next step will be configuring the relay. And here it shows the, the software from um, Alstom Recon. And here we are configuring this distance relay to have uh, zone 1 to cover 80% of the line, and then zone 2 to cover 120% of the line with 200 millisecond time delay. And then we will need to configure the sample value ID as you can see here. Then we open this IED configurator to configure the goose messaging part. So first, uh, we could specify the IED name and then some communication parameters. 
And here we create a data set. It contains two data attributes, which are uh, the general trip signal for distance zone 1 and distance zone 2. Then we will need to configure the goose control block by specifying the MAC address, IP ID, and uh, some other uh, timing parameters. And here uh, we will associate a, a, this control block with the predefined data set. The last step will be exporting uh, this SCL file to be later uh, used by the simulator. For the simulator to be able to understand the SCL file, our driver team has developed an ICD parser tool to read the SCL file and then generate a list of all the connection points defined in the file. And each connection point has a unique sensor number so that later in the model, you will be able to assign this number to map the measurement to the IO channels. So for example, here if we have a voltage probe which is used to measure the 3 phase voltage at um, a bus, if we assign the sensor number 11000 to phase A voltage measurement, then um, since you can see that here, this 11000 is linked to the voltage A measurement in the sample value output. So later on, during the real-time simulation, uh, the voltage we measure here will be sent out as a part of the sample value message. So now we are ready to start the real-time simulation. And during the simulation, we could use scope view to acquire and monitor the real-time simulation waveforms. So here it, it is the interface of scope view and we are acquiring the steady state waveforms for voltage, current, uh, the trip signal coming from the relay, and also the, the status of the circuit breaker. And we could also use scope wheel to trigger timing events, such as applying a fault or um, operate a circuit breaker. And in scope wheel, we are able to save the waveform as a Comtrade file or a MAT file or PDF file just for um, the users uh, to analyze the, the data later after the simulation. And it is very flexible in the sense that you could arrange the waveforms in many different ways and we could also apply uh, cursors just to measure the maximum, minimum or average value during a certain time interval. And in scope wheel, there are also uh, many mathematical functions that could help us to um, carry out some data processing. So for example, here we're uh, using the symmetrical component module to calculate the zero sequence and positive sequence current. Another example will be uh, the crossing time function. So it can be used to detect a rising edge of a signal so when we receive a trip signal from the relay, we will be able to use this function to determine uh, when, is, uh, when the relay operates, and then we will be able to calculate the operate time. As I mentioned before, if you have many different scenarios to test, you could use test view to automate the test sequence. So here it shows the interface of test view, and you will be able to specify which model you want to use and which at what uh, time step you want to carry out the simulation. In test view, there are um, many different features that could help you to define the sequence and carry out the test. So for example, we have this snapshot function. So basically, uh, it takes a snapshot of the steady state condition of your model and then apply it later before you apply the fault. So all the test cases, they start from the same initial conditions. And to make it easier to define the sequence, we have this HEP Excel function that could read input parameter from Excel spreadsheet. 
So you just need to uh, specify the path of the file and then uh, the range, the name of the range where you define the input parameters. And then test view will automatically uh, detect how many cases you have defined in the in the file. And inside Excel file, you just need to use the name of the block you have in the model and the name of the parameters. So here we are varying the fault location and also the fault type. After running a chapter test, test view will save uh, the waveforms and it could also export the test result in Excel report. So for example here we have the operate time of the relay under test um, under different test scenarios and here we could uh, carry out some post processing to calculate the average operate time. And also since we saved the waveforms of each test if you are interested in one of the tests or in several of the tests, you could easily find the waveforms in scope view and then just to play it back. So just to make it easier for you to carry out some post analysis of the test result.